you can change the world. Learn from proven change makers from all walks of life. They'll show you how to raise money, invest for impact, and so much more. You can start small, start today, and never quit. You can change the world by strengthening your superpowers. Now, Welcome to the Superpowers for Good show. I'm your host, Devin Thorpe. Welcome, everyone. I am just thrilled to have with us today George Cook. He's the founder and CEO of Honeycomb Credit, one of the leading crowdfunding portals and one of those few really dedicated to small businesses and uh, and debt. This is really an important conversation. You do not want to miss this. This is kind of a you know, one of those secrets to how to make money. So you don't, don't leave, don't leave, stick around. Uh, George, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, Devin. Great to be here. Well, we're, we're, we're just, we're just thrilled to have you. You know, I've, um, I've been investing on the platform for a long time and uh, excited to see what you're doing and uh, thrilled to have you on the show. So thank you very much. Um, in fact, uh, George, I ran a story uh, about Honeycomb Credit uh, five years ago uh, when you reached a million dollars in total volume accomplished. And it was kind of a big deal that you'd done a million dollars back in 2019. How much have you done now? We are on our way to 25 million. Uh, so, so, uh, one million. I, I remember that milestone vividly. That was a lot of fun. That was really exciting. But but yeah, now now up to twenty five million dollars across the platform. Yeah, that's it's just phenomenal, and it's exciting to see. Uh, I'm going to uh, turn on a little video here to see if I can uh, get this to work. But the you've done some really uh, cool offerings. Tell us about some of the offerings that you've had on the portal. Yeah, so, so Honeycomb is a loan crowdfunding platform. We, we call it a community capital platform where independently owned small businesses are raising capital from their own customers and fans and community members and sometimes friendly strangers on the internet who just want to support small businesses and, and uh, you know, help them uh, on their growth journey. So we have uh, businesses from across the country. We've done deals in, in 35 different states now, uh, running the gamut from uh, puzzle companies to ice cream companies to coffee shops and microbreweries. It really is a lot of uh, kind of wholesome Main Street small businesses that, that are the types of businesses that really make our community shine. Uh, these are often businesses that have been around for a couple of years. They're, they're in growth mode. Uh, they're looking to buy a new piece of equipment, to launch a new product line, or to uh, you know, maybe move into their second or third location. And so they use Honeycomb as a way to get that intermediate capital to, to help them take that growth journey. Uh, and then they have the benefit of being able to pay that back to their customers and fans uh, instead of paying back a faceless lender, you know, they're paying back their neighbors and their community to help people build wealth while their businesses grow. Yeah, it really is kind of, uh, I mean, it's really, really cool. One of the things that I love about this is that people can uh, build a nice little portfolio of loan investments that are yielding more than the long-term returns of the stock market. Uh, that's kind of exciting that uh, these are real investments. This isn't just charity. And sometimes we, we in the impact community get a little excited about the impact side. And I do, I do, but, but it's kind of exciting to see the, the, the returns. Now you come at this very much as a, a business. You have a, a banking background. Tell us a little bit about how you, transitioned from banking and what you learned in banking that is guiding what you're doing at Honeycomb Credit. Yeah, certainly. So so I started my career, but my family is has run a small community bank in, in rural Appalachia for 130 years. Uh, so I really grew up in the family business and I fell in love with relationship lending, with, with working with business owners 
who are literally sitting across the street from the branches that I was working out of. And, and, and really just, you know, I loved working with entrepreneurs and hearing their stories and, and playing a small piece in, in their growth journey. Uh, ultimately, I spent most of my career working for TransUnion. I uh, spent some time at a startup in Los Angeles uh, called Zest AI, where I was working on big data and credit analytics and basically helping really big lenders make faster, smarter lending decisions using data. And I realized that the lending industry was changing really rapidly and that we were leaving a lot of small businesses behind uh, as, the, as the industry changed. So, uh, you know, kind of saw that. And, and uh, while I was in grad school, I was thinking a lot about this. I had the great fortune of meeting my, my then classmate, now co-founder, who was, while we were in school together, running a chain of coffee shops. And he kept getting turned down for SBA loans. This is a smart guy, you know, Ivy League degree. He was a former investment banker and he couldn't, he couldn't get an SBA loan for his small business. And I looked at Ken and I said, Ken, you know, if you can't do this, how is the average person figuring out how to unlock capital for their business? And we put our heads together and came up with the idea for Honeycomb to really empower small businesses to take that step, to borrow from people who know them, who trust them, who believe in them. Uh, and to pay back to those people that are willing to take a chance on these small business entrepreneurs. Yeah, just just love it. One of, one of the things that I love about what's going on on Honeycomb Credit is the diversity of the founders. You know, you talk about how difficult it is for someone like Ken with an Ivy League degree to get money. It, it's much harder for women and for especially women of color. Uh, People with other, you know, that check other diversity boxes can be really difficult. I want to just play um, a brief part of the the promo video that one of your companies did to raise and, and ask you to comment on this when it after it done. Hi, my name is John Mossholder. I'm the secretary owner of Buffalo Berry Farm here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. We are a deaf owned, deaf operated company that produces honey, honey cream spreads, or oil honey spreads. Buffalo Berry Farm was founded in 2011 by my mom, Karen Mossholder, the queen bee of Buffalo Berry Farm. When she retired, I decided to take over the company. I was inspired through my family. My family is full of entrepreneurs, and I wanted to provide support to the deaf community and carry on my mom's legacy by selling our product. So we are looking to raise the funds through Honeycomb Credit to get new uh, equipment to help us be able to clean our spreads in-house and to save the cost, be more efficient, and be able to bring our bees back on the rooftop. Tell us about that. Yeah, I mean, that, that was such a fun offering and, and John is, is a great entrepreneur and a great human being. Um, you know, it's, it's to us, it, you know, th this, this is such an opportunity to do well while you do good, right? Uh, the, the diversity of business owners, as you alluded to on our platform right now, uh, you, you know, we're working with businesses that support uh, it, it, disabled uh, entrepreneurs. Uh, we have a ton of veteran owned businesses. More than half of the businesses we work with are owned by uh, BIPOC business owners. Uh, almost two thirds are women owned businesses uh, and over 40% of the businesses we work with are in low to moderate income communities. So it's an incredibly diverse group of entrepreneurs that we get to work with. And, and like John, every single one of them has these incredible, uh, inspiring stories that, that just get us fired up every single day to come into work and, and know that we're playing this tiny little piece and, and their, their growth journey. Uh, and, and that's how we want our investors to feel. We want them to, to log in and it, you know every single offering we have, uh, we help coordinate a professional video shoot to really help the entrepreneurs tell their story. And it's almost a little mini Shark Tank where, where you can, can come to the Honeycomb site and you can hear these stories. You can dig in and understand the health of the business too. Of course, that's important. Uh, but then you get to decide which of these businesses 
uh, you want to put your own hard-earned money into and, and see that money go to work in your community. So uh, yeah, the, the, this offering in particular has, has a, a very dear place in my heart. They're actually our neighbors from our headquarters in Pittsburgh. So they're in our neighborhood and we, we know that team. Uh, we have tremendous respect for what they're building. Uh, and that was a really, really fun offering. But I think it's uh, a great representation of the types of businesses we work with and the incredible diversity that we see on the Honeycomb platform. As you work on offerings, one of the things that you do is some measure of diligence. The, the, you know, it's an interesting thing. The, the SEC requires you to do some things. They limit your ability to do others. Tell us about how you screen and vet the companies before their offerings are live. Yeah, great question, Devin. So, so every business that you see on the Honeycomb platform is going through a rigorous application process. Uh, so we have an online application for entrepreneurs. They, they're they uploading their previous financials. They're uploading their business plan. They're uploading a lot of background information uh, on, on the business. Um, we're running credit reports on the business owners. We do have credit score cutoffs internally at the, the organization. And, and that's my background, right? I, I, again, come from a banking background. I come from a, a credit risk background at, at TransUnion. And so it's something we take really seriously. We have a, a really robust credit policy about who we're able to work with and who we're not able to work with. And so, you know, every single business is is going through this process before they're invited to the Honeycomb platform. But then we also view the process of raising money from your community as part of the due diligence process. If you can convince your customers and your fans and your community members to, to invest in your business, then you're probably doing something right. You're probably doing something that is res resonating with your, your community. And, and we believe that's actually a really important way to, to think about the risk of businesses. You know, a lot of ways that's what community banks used to do historically. Uh, but as we've moved to bigger, more centralized banks, we've, as an industry, kind of moved away from. Yeah, it, it as the industry changes and it really has hasn't it you know the dramatic consolidation it really is changing how small business loans are made and so i i think there are a lot of communities that don't really have banks where small you know anybody's actively doing small business loans so uh honeycomb is filling an important just critical niche well, listen uh george we're going to come back here in a minute uh, but folks i this is just such a critically important conversation. I want you to stick around. We've got George Cook. He's the uh, founder and CEO of Honeycomb Credit, one of the more successful, important crowdfunding sites, the community capital sites that uh, exist out there. But when we come back, we're going to talk to George about his superpower. So stick around. You don't want to miss this. Join us at SuperCrowd Baltimore to connect with community-focused business leaders and investors working to support diverse founders, social entrepreneurs, and community builders. Learn how to raise money from the crowd and how to invest like a pro. March 21st at the B&O Rail Museum. Register today at thesupercrowd.com. Hope to raise money from the impact crowd. Good investors are as interested in community, social, or environmental impact as you. Connect with Funding Hope an SEC-registered FINRA member crowdfunding portal to learn how to raise capital from the impact crowd. Scan the QR code now. Join us for Super Crowd 24 for two full days of wealth and impact creating content at this virtual conference on April 17th and 18th. We'll have 100 speakers and live pitch sessions. Learn how to invest like a pro and raise money from the crowd. Save 50% with the discount code SUPERCROWD at thesupercrowd.com. Welcome back, everyone. We're just so excited. We're here with George Cook. He is the, the CEO and founder of Honeycomb Credit, uh, and he's just an exceptional human being. George, you know, you really are impressive when you think about what you've done at Honeycomb Credit, uh, ignoring kind of all the other amazing things you've done in your career. What you've done at Honeycomb is truly and genuinely amazing. I, I want to congratulate you for that. As you think about that, though, what what do you see as your superpower? Yeah, th thanks, Devin. I, I, I've been thinking a lot about that. And, and I think the, the thing that is my superpower is the ability to 
combine the analytical, the data, with the human connection and, and the empathy that, that's required to, to live in a society. I think, you know, I, as, as a society, we talk so much these days about big data and machine learning and, and artificial intelligence and how that's changing everything. And we forget the, the human connectivity and, and we sometimes think about the world all, all as data. And, and we forget that the qualitative data can be just as important, right? An, an algorithm can't answer all of your questions because so much of what we experience in the world isn't just a clean number, right? It does, is the, is the baguette at the bakery, does it taste good? That's a really hard thing to put into an algorithm to get a good result. And so being able to have a really empathetic human connection, uh, whether that's with entrepreneurs or our investors or whomever we're working with, while at the same time understanding and being able to leverage the power of data, if you can put those two things together, uh, the, the sky is the limit. Yeah. You really have developed uh, an, an amazing superpower. And of course, you're bringing it to great effect. As you think about that, uh, that, that human connection, can you think of an example, perhaps, I, I'm going to ask you to stretch a little bit. Can you think of an example when you used that ability to solve a business problem? Yeah, I mean, it's it's almost every day, right? It, it is when we talk about working with small business entrepreneurs at Honeycomb and we are reviewing their numbers and we're as a team sitting down and going through their profit and loss statement from 2021 and their profit and loss statement and their balance sheet from 2022 and we're combing through all these numbers and really uh, understanding the financial performance of a business, that's important. That stuff is, is critically important. But we always, as a team, stop and take uh, several minutes to talk about the story of the entrepreneur, of what they're building. You know, Are they passionate? Are they in it for the long haul? What do their reviews look like online? You know, are their customers really bought in and excited about the business? And and to me, that that's the other half of the coin. That's the other important piece of the puzzle. That if you're just looking at the numbers, you, you might find uh, a business that that looks good on paper, but there's not a lot under the hood. There's not a lot under the surface uh, to to really uh, show that they've got staying power and and a true connection with their community. And you know, those are the businesses that I want to see exist in the world. Those are the businesses I want to see supported. Um, but also from a financial perspective, I believe, and one of the key hypotheses of the business I built is that those businesses turn out to be a lower risk because if they have captivated their customers, if they've captivated their local community, then those are the businesses that have the staying power. Those are the ones that are in it for the long haul. Yeah. As you think about this, human connection as a superpower. I, I wonder if you could think about how we can develop it better. I mean, for the rest of us, right? Those of us who are not as good at that as you are, how would you coach us to develop that skill, that ability so that we can be more effective as human beings and be more effective in business? Yeah, you know, one of the things I think a lot about is the difference between empathy and sympathy, right? I think, I think that we sometimes get caught in this trap that we have to agree with the other person in order to respect the other person, whoever we're engaging with in our lives, that we have to, to fundamentally believe in the same thing that they believe in. And, and I don't believe that to be true. I think that there is at a human level an opportunity to, to just generally respect and appreciate other human beings, even if we disagree with them on very fundamental issues. I think, you know, this is a broader thing that we're seeing across our society right now. 
but I, I think you know, generally speaking, um, to to just respect where people are coming from and and take a second to understand their point of view and 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 their perspective on the world, even if it's fundamentally different than yours. Uh, you can still get along and you can still have genuine, authentic relationships. And that's that's where how communities are built. Right. And and for us, as much as anything, you know, we started Honeycomb as a, as a community building platform, as a place to bring people together, to, to have that that uh, that forum where where uh, businesses and their customers are engaging in these real, true, authentic ways. I think as a society, sometimes we forget that. We think we just have to agree with everything uh, or, or disagree with someone and therefore they're different than me and I, I don't have to respect them. I think you can both disagree and respect. And I think that's really kind of foundational to, to my, my view uh, on how to build a company and my view on um, just outlook of the world. You know, that that's profoundly important. We live in a time when we see a greater division than perhaps at any time in American history, uh, at least since the Civil War. And yet your point is so incredibly important. We don't have to uh, disrespect people we disagree with. Um, it, it's really an important concept. As you think about that, um, is there a way that you can identify to help us find respect for people we disagree with? Uh, you know, the, the way I do it every single day is, is no, nobody fights about ice cream. Nobody fights about their favorite food truck. No, no, no one's fighting over a microbrew, right? I, I think that uh, so much of what small businesses do is that they bring community together. And I think as a society, we have chronically underinvested in our small business landscape. And I, I think if we can bring Main Street back to, to uh, you know, its former glory and, and really help Main Street entrepreneurs uh, find their footing and build stable, sustainable businesses that they can support themselves and their families, I, I think uh, that's one small way that we can bring people together. We can quite literally break bread together and, and have those conversations and connect on a very human level uh, it, it, on Main Street. And, and I think small businesses are such an important piece of that. Uh, and, and it's fun to see you know, such a diverse group of businesses um, and, and these entrepreneurs connecting on the Honeycomb platform, giving each other advice, encouraging each other, investing in each other. And likewise, the local people in the community supporting businesses, uh, even if the entrepreneur doesn't look like them, even if the entrepreneur doesn't believe the same things as them, they, they want that pizza shop to grow. They want that next location to, to survive and, and thrive. And, you know, I think small businesses bring people together in that really tangible way. And, and uh, that, I hope, is my small part of, of bringing people together. Well, that, that is just vitally important. And uh, it's fun to see the success you're having at Honeycomb. Uh, and I, I want to invite you to take a minute now and just tell people how they can uh, learn more about Honeycomb Credit. And, and, you know, take a few seconds to tell people how they can invest, uh, tell people how to take a few, you know, where to start if they want to raise money on Honeycomb or at least explore that possibility. And, and take a minute uh, to tell people how to connect with you personally, perhaps on social media or otherwise, so that people uh, don't leave today wondering uh, how to get more information and don't know how, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so uh, our website is, is honeycombcredit.com. Uh, you can find us on social media at Honeycomb Credit. Uh, in terms of the, you know, how to engage and join the platform by, by coming to Honeycomb Credit, uh, anyone over the age of 18 with a U.S. bank account is able to invest on the platform. Our minimum investment is $100. So we try to make it really approachable, really democratic, and, and allow a lot of people, not just millionaires, to invest on the site. You can go to our Explore page and you'll see dozens of live offerings at any given time. They rotate quickly almost every 30 days. So check back often. 
Uh, and you can scroll through and find businesses maybe in your community or, or maybe in communities that are important to you or businesses that just look fun and, and engaging that you can go through, watch their video, learn more about the entrepreneur, get into the financial data and, and learn more about it. Uh, so yeah, check out honeycombcredit.com. Fantastic. And, and that's a good place to start if you want to raise capital too, right? Whether you want to invest or raise, go there, right? Absolutely. And yeah, we have an online application. You can get started right at, right on the website. Fantastic. Well, we want to wish you every success in the great work that you're doing. Thank you, Devin. It's been great to, to chat. All righty. Let's do some good.